Yeah, we, we try not to do only market data. Because I think that um, if they're in the mode to buy or sell, they care. But what about those seven years in between on average people move? Well, I think it's even five years now, but still, how do I say relevant in their life for the next five years before they buy or sell so that they reach out to me when it's time? And so for us, it's, you know, on our consumer stuff, it's very localized, you know, here, yes, there maybe it's a little bit of real estate. Lab Coat Nation, welcome back to another episode of the Lab Coat Agents Podcast. And today we are bringing to you a live, breathing, human real estate professional who is doing some pretty amazing things. And as some of you may have noticed recently, we've been trying to bring on more uh, actual people that are in, that have, that roll up their sleeves every day, get dirty, and do business. And we want to share with you their strategies, their processes, and the things that they've done. And our guest today, his name is Cody Tuma. He is a team leader broker out of the state of Oregon. He's also in his short time in the business, just five years in the real estate business, also has founded a platform called OfferForm, which was originally designed, if I'm not mistaken, for you and your team. And it turned into becoming something that you know, people started to take notice and then obviously now you're offering it to the real estate industry. So I'm sure we were going to talk a little bit about that today, but uh, Cody, let's get to know who the hell you are. So welcome to the show, first of all, and then why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and kind of what brought you into real estate and what led you to where you are today? Yeah, yeah. Thanks uh, very much, Jeff, for that intro. Very much a fan of Lab Code Agents, been involved with Lab Code Agents for the last few years, and it's brought tremendous value to me. So I'm really excited to give back to the Lab Coats Agents community um, today. Um, but my my introduction into real estate, it was not really what I had in mind. I didn't think I would end up in real estate. I was in college and did some e-commerce businesses and never really thought that real estate would be on my radar. It's never really something that I thought of. Um, but after graduating college and you know having mixed success with e-commerce, a family friend was a realtor and just kind of picked her brain on you know how you like real estate, thought about maybe just getting it on the side. And, you know, I, I did do that. I got my real estate license just kind of on the side as a side gig and uh, sold my brother's house, made like $10,000 on my first paycheck. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know how hard I had to work in e-commerce to make that kind of money? Wow, this is, this is pretty cool. So I thought that I, I'd kind of take that and run with it and uh, really, you know, hit the ground running and really focusing on real estate and just uh, really every year, um, kind of just reinvested into being a, a real estate agent into both you know education, my systems, my processes, my marketing, my advertising. And, and year over year, I just kind of found that I was doubling my production. And just a couple of years ago, I started a team. And uh, also that's uh, where it kind of led me into offer form that we, we talked about earlier too. So it's been a great you know first, five years in, in real estate and uh, super excited about what's to come for the future. Awesome, man. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what brought you into the business, which that's not unheard of. Like that's a, you know, I think a lot of people get into real estate for similar reasons. You know, obviously it's, oh, I see the kind of money that I can make, but it's not that easy. And many of you listening to this are probably living that. Uh, or you get into it because, you know, hey, I can do it on the side, right? COVID happened and I have more time on my hands. I can go get my license and maybe I can make a few extra bucks or, or you know, hey, I can control my schedule. You know, and, and the way you just described it was very simple. I got my license. I did a deal. I made a bunch of money and was like, holy crap. But it's not that easy. No, no, it's definitely not that easy. And, and so, I, you know, I, I think talking to the younger agents that are out there, because again, you've been in the business for only five years and you've had very good success. Last year, you did 30 million. And so what's what, you know, what are some of the, the pieces of advice that you would give to an agent who's been in the business less than five years? What would you say are some of the, 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 the steps or, or strategies that you've implemented that have helped you get to where you are today. And then you grew a team. I mean, you're doing what a lot of people aspire to do. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, I, I really kind of just always treated being a real estate agent like a business and from like a business owner point of view to where I'm looking at, you know, the, the big picture of, you know, what do I need to do to, you know, spend on, on marketing to bring in more business? You know, how do I convert more deals? How do I take the existing deals that I have in my pipeline and, you know, have a system and process to where those deals can be properly served and et cetera, et cetera. And I think like starting out for me, you know, I would take the money like that first, you know, $10,000 paycheck I made, I then invested that into building um, a really cool website um, presence for myself. And then around that website, you know, a system to where I can, you know, bring inbound leads in and then, you know, actually paying um, for some lead services. I, I did a lot of like online lead gen when I first started out. I, you know, I know a lot of people have mixed feelings on Zillow, um, but I was a, a Zillow person five years ago. And that did help me with my start, you know, by spending some money there. And then the money that I would make off of Zillow, I would then reinvest that into other lead pillars. Um, started to do a lot with, you know, um, outbound um, reach into, um, you know, prospecting for expireds for, for sale by owners and really developing systems and processes for that. And, you know, I think by considering it and looking at it from a business, it, it really kind of changes your mindset of, you know, not just, you know, hey, I'm a real estate agent. People are just going to come to me because I'm a real estate agent, but more, you know, treating it from, um, you know, business point of view where you've got marketing, you've got these expenses and, and where do I spend those dollars to, you know, help grow the business. So what would you say when, when, you know, as you describe all this stuff, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's 30,000 foot level. Let's get mm -hmm. more granular on this stuff. Yeah. And, and so as, as you are going into the business, you know, very simple concept. I made 10 grand. I reinvested a lot of that, which I don't mm -hmm. think a lot of people do. I think they go and invest it in a, in a, in a car payment, right? That's mm -hmm. what they tend to do or a purse or something like that. But so novel idea, number one, you know, and this is, this is, if you're listening to this and you are a leader or you are a broker, like this is the kind of stuff that you need to be picking up on because this is what your young agents and many of you, if you own a brokerage, you're hiring agents from outside of the industry. And so they need to come in from day one and learn what to do. And so picking up some of these things from somebody who's doing it, using this as, as, as a catalyst or an example for those agents. So back to my question, Cody, is, is, is so what, what would you say, you know, that was vague. Um, and, and so I want you to dial in a little bit more. And yeah. so when, when you took that 10 grand and you invested it into leads, you know, what was your process around the leads? Was it simply buy leads, be, be speed to lead and, and that sort of thing? What, what did you do? Like what, what created then the next deal? Yeah. A, a big part of my success, especially with these online leads was making sure that I kind of had a system in place to handle those online leads. Um, a big part of that was a good CRM to where I can, you know, get that inbound lead, put it into my marketing funnel. And upon immediately receiving the lead, I would call them. So if it was, if I was in the middle of dinner or if I was out with friends and family, you know, it didn't matter to me. Like I would literally just drop everything and call that lead as quickly as I could, because I know that if I didn't, they would reach out to someone else or they'd get their information from somewhere else. And these people have no loyalty, these online leads. They don't know me. I don't know them. So they have no problem just getting that information from someone else. So I wanted to be make, making sure that I am the first person they talk to and I can get that information for them right away. And then in discussions with those leads, you know, if there was, you know, something that needed to be followed up or followed through, I would make sure that I would follow through with what I said I was going to do. So if it was whether scheduling that showing um, for, you know, the weekend or getting them specific information on that property, you know, calling the listing agent right away or going into the MLS right away and, and getting them that specific information. And then once, you know, I've, I've kind of created a little bit of rapport with them, the biggest thing that I want to do is, is set up the appointment. So meet them actually in person, because as soon as you meet the lead in person, there's that, you know, breakdown from, okay, you're no longer a voice on the phone. You're actually someone that I've met in person. And there's more of that relationship aspect of things. And so I never, I didn't ask them if they are pre-approved. I didn't frankly actually care all that much if they were pre-approved because to me, it was more about the relationship 
And then, you know, finding out, you know, later on, you know, how I can help them, you know, if they need help getting pre-approved, if they're already pre-approved, great. Um, but really the biggest thing for me was creating that relationship. And, and that's a big thing um, of my success with these online leads was all about that relationship. And then having my systems and processes in place to where, you know, I can follow up with them. I can set reminders, have, you know, um, relevant property, you know, drip campaigns on these leads for specific search criteria, if that's not the, the home that they would want. Um, and just really creating a, a tailored experience around following up with these people and creating relationships. Um, so that way, you know, eventually down the road, um, when they do end up buying a home or, you know, maybe they don't buy a home, but they, they like how well that uh, I treated them and, and had a great relationship. Maybe they refer me to friends and family. So that was, that was a big part of my early success of being uh, an agent working these online leads. So I want to talk about what that system looked like and what that followed, what your sauce was. But I want to, I want to digress for a second and just point out that you hear, you heard what he said. And so whether you're that new agent or you're the agent coaching other agents, or you want to recruit agents, you, you know, you can have that mindset because nowadays, you know, we can go to 10 billion different real estate conferences with 10 billion different coaches and speakers and experts in quotations. And, and there's a lot of them that are going to stand there and preach and tell you how you need to control your schedule. And, you know, you need to be no when to shut off. But what I heard you say is what I would preach and exactly what I did in my business, which was simply, I'm going to be available as often as humanly possible, other than when I'm sleeping. And I'm going to do everything I can to, to, to be accessible. And so many people get into this business and think to themselves, uh, it, you know, if it's family time, I'm not answering my phone. If I'm watching TV, I'm not answering my phone. If it's on the weekend, I'm not answering my phone. But the reality is this, you have that, you can do that. You have that luxury. But the reality is there's the Cody Tumas of the world and Jeff Fitzers of the world. And there's a lot of other people of the world that just want it more than you do. And if you're not willing to do simple things like call the lead, the minute you get triggered, no matter what you're doing, um, you're run a big risk of not getting many of those leads because there's going to be other people out there that are willing to do more than you are. And you have to embrace that, embrace it, overcome it, or realize that you're just kind of screwed when it comes to leads. So let's fast forward now to those strategies. So what, what was your sauce? What is your follow-up sauce? Because there's a million of those as well. There's automation, there's, you know, different CRMs. Tell us what you did. Yeah. So originally I used Lion Desk and it was a great, you know, all-in-one encompassing CRM, but uh, the follow-up system that I used then is, is kind of been modified to what I'm using now, but it's still kind of based upon the core principles. So as soon as I receive this lead, I have my automation triggered set. So if I am not able to get a hold of this lead right away, my system, my drip campaign kicks in and I'm currently using Chime um, to handle all of my automation and systems that I have. Um, but I've got a, a um, video that I pre-created that I, like a text video that goes out immediately if I'm not able to connect with this lead. Actually, sorry, I call the lead uh, twice. So if they don't answer the first time, I call again right away. And if they don't answer that second time, then I start this automated drip campaign. And the drip campaign sends out a text message video of me basically stating, hey, this is Cody with Five for One Home Sales. I just got your inquiry on realtor.com or on Zillow or Google or Facebook, whatever the lead source is. So it's specific for that lead source. So it looks like I just created that video, but I've got these you know, evergreen videos that I've created um, so that way they can be sent at any time. So that way, if I'm busy, you know, working another lead or, or something um, that I can, you know, continue to use this automation that I've got set. Um, so it'll send out that video um, discussing, you know, a little bit about, you know, the lead source and how I can help them and how I'm really looking forward to um, connecting with them. Um, and then from there, I send a voicemail drop um, that then will go into effect uh, like a minute or two after that video has been sent. The video or the voicemail drop is, is pretty similar, just saying, hey, you know, sorry, I missed you. I would love to connect uh, with you about your inquiry on realtor.com or Zillow, whatever the source is. And then it's just a, a follow up campaign for the next seven days to where it's reminding me to then call the lead. 
um, later on that day. So if it came in in the you know morning, I'm going to call them again in the afternoon after that first initial sequence. And then I click the call, they don't answer again, then it can, it keeps them in the sequence. And then the next day, it's more video, meet more text videos, um, more texting, um, and then an email as well. Um, and then I'll also put them, it's, I know it's a lot of stuff, and I know it's overwhelming, but my biggest thing is really just to get in front of this lead and, and to start that conversation. Because as soon as that conversation starts, I stop all of this, you know, intense, you know, lead follow up stuff. Um, so it's a mix of like automation and personalization, like all in one to that. Um, and then that will go on for really like the next seven days of this intense follow up sequence. And then if I'm not able to reach them, then then I'll typically just put them on a property search alert um, through my system and then just drip properties on them, you know, a few times a week. Um, and then, you know, try calling them, you know, every so often, but typically if I'm not able to reach this lead within the first seven days, they're probably not going to, you know, be too responsive, but, you know, occasionally, you know, I'll get people that, you know, I send properties to, you know, two, three years. And finally, after sending, you know, relevant properties to them, they'll eventually reach out and be like, oh, Cody, this looks interesting. Can we go see this this weekend? And they never responded to anything else. I didn't even think they were getting the email. They didn't respond to any phone calls or, or texts or anything. And then one property hit their inbox and they, you know, for whatever reason, wanted to go see it then and have converted deals from that. I've converted, you know, uh, you know, $500,000 lead from that, a million dollar um, home from that. Um, so I really think just it's important to have these systems and processes and capabilities to handle that. And I've since expanded upon this to where, you know, how I was saying, you know, it's so much important for speed to lead um, for me. Now I'm so busy and I've grown my business so much. I had to bring on another agent um, who also I've, um, ingrain these same qualities to where, you know, Hey, look, you know, when these leads come in, you're, you're dropping everything you're doing and you're, you're taking this lead. Um, and that's helped my, um, agent that I brought on, um, also be successful. So really just these systems and processes for whatever lead source you're working, just making sure that it's relevant information and you continue the follow-up process, even if it seems a little overwhelming. Cause the biggest thing for me, you know, I might get the occasional, like, you know, screw off or something, but, you know, more often than not, you know, I'm trying to come from a place of value and connect with these people. And then once I'm able to eventually make that connection, you know, it's, it's, it's usually something that I have an opportunity to convert into, you know, a client that converts into a sale. Love it. And, and you say that that's, that's intense. I, I, I frankly disagree. I mean, that's, that's what's necessary. And, and anybody with the half a brain in real estate knows that like that's, this is the part this is a part of the game that you have to be engaged in and setting up your systems for, or you don't have the same level of success or you have your own magic pill, but there's not a whole lot of them out there. Right. So let's talk about, you know, we talked really more specifically about leads. Is that really where you've hung your hat in your five years? Or uh, is there any other arena that you would say has been kind of a, a kind of a golden goose for you? Yeah, um, the the online lead things were were definitely a huge pillar and continues to be a pillar of my of my business. But obviously, it's since grown from then. Um, I really wanted to tackle another lead source. Um, so a few years ago, I got into the expired listings and the for sale by owners, and I have similar automation set up for expired listings, similar automation set up for for sale by owners to where the, my system automatically knows when there's an expired or a FISBO, it dumps in the expired and the FISBO into um, my CRM. And then I'm able to, from there, um, start a whole sequence. So as soon as that um, expired hits at eight in the morning, I'm calling that expired. And then if they're not answering, I'm following a similar sequence of events as a new online lead that I get to where I'm sending them a, a text video um, I'm sending them voicemail drops. I'm sending them emails. I'm sending, I'm, I'm calling them um, over and over again to where I eventually get these, you know, expireds on the, on the line or, you know, these FISBOs on the line and, and work those leads, you know, accordingly. Um, so that's been a, a, another big pillar um, of my business, working the expireds and the FISBOs and then referrals um, from just how well that I've treated and uh, the experience that these, you know, relationships and people that I've, you know, worked with, with these, 
online leads or these other clients, these other lead sources, they refer me business just because they were so happy with uh, the experience and how everything went. So a big part of my business now is, you know, just making sure that people are still well, well taken care of and, and past clients, um, you know, I still reach out to and, you know, make sure that uh, they're still set with everything. And if there's anything I can do and, you know, trying to get that referral, repeat and referral business too, um, is also very important. What does that look like? You know, what, what are the, some of the things you're doing uh, to stay in touch with your past customers? Yeah, so a, a big thing that I'm doing for past customers, um, obviously, like the big things of, you know, I'm sending them birthday cards. Um, I've got my system set up to where, you know, I've got their birth dates um, and then I send them a handwritten card through it's called handwritten.com and it's a service where you can set it up with like Zapier. So when it triggers on their birthday, it'll send them like a handwritten card and I can put into there like a gift card, like a Starbucks gift card or something, just, you know, something along the lines of, Hey, you know, just thinking about you on your birthday, happy birthday, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then doing similar things on like Christmas, um, sending them, you know, a card, handwritten card on Christmas. Um, and then I'll also, you know, shoot them the occasional text message um, and phone call, um, you know, a few times throughout the year to where I'm, I'm literally just calling them up, um, asking them how things are going in the house, you know, if they need any referrals for any contractors or if there's anything that I can do to help them and just trying to have like that personal conversation with those people and uh, just kind of do that a few times throughout the year. And I've got it set up in my CRM to where, you know, I've got all my past clients and then I can see when the last time that they were touched and interact with um, so that way I can tell when I need to, you know, give that personal call or that personal text or that personal um, video text message. You know, if I see something that was relevant um, to what we, you know, maybe had talked about in the, in the transaction or something that was relevant to the client's hobbies or interest, um, just trying to make it as personalized as I can with those past clients. So that way they, when they think of real estate and, you know, their friends moving to town or their neighbors moving that um, hopefully they think of me. I love it. I love it. And, um, and, and I was going to ask you, so when you say the phone calls and the text messages, those are personal, those aren't automated, those aren't put dropping them in a system and then mass. mass yeah, I, I, I've got, I've got it set in the system to where it will remind me um, to personally, um, you know, send a text or an email or a phone call, because with those people that I've already worked with before, I want it to be as personalized as possible. So I do um, have some manual um, parts to that as well as a little bit of automation, like the cards and stuff are automated. Um, but the actual phone calls and text messages or video texts that I send, those ones are personalized. And I do that just a few times throughout the year um, to just kind of provide that, you know, personal touch to those past clients. I love it. I mean, you're very systematized. Everything that we've talked about here is 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 got a plan, and it's been you've you've set something up on the back end. And I, I don't know what the statistics are, but I do believe that uh, a good portion of our industry either a doesn't have a CRM, b has a CRM and does nothing with it. Um, and I would probably say that it, I bet it's pushing 80, 90 percent of the industry that falls into one of those two categories. And if you're listening to this, you're, you got to be thinking to yourself, I mean, this is this is the systems and processes that anybody, I mean, listen, if, if you're not closing, you know, five to 10 deals a month, there is time in the day to work on this stuff. You've just got to be disciplined enough to do it. And, and so, you know, as you were as you were going down this path, obviously, you clearly just have the way you think is probably just a little bit different than the average Joe who, again, goes out and buys that purse or a car payment and, and you're reinvesting in your business and you're setting up these systems, which most people just don't do. And you're showing that it works. I, didn't, didn't a lot of that, you know, kind of that, that moxie of who you are, is that what led to you building out your own platform, which is offer form? Yeah, that, that's exactly it in terms. So we talked a lot about like the lead gen and all that stuff, but like the actual transaction part, I also have fully systematized and automated that um, aspect of things. But really where offer form originated from was, you know, two years ago when the real estate market was just on absolute fire, I wrote 27 offers for one client and I didn't have a system or process set up then to handle writing so many offers and gathering up all this offer information and all this data. And I was like, man, you know, I just keep asking the same questions. What do you want to do for purchase price? What do you want to do for earnest money? What do you want to do for a closing date? What about personal property? Do you want to do, you know, a unique strategy to where we do a seller rent back and appraisal gap clause, escalation addendum, 
you know, do you want the seller to pay for the, the septic inspection? Do you want to pay for the septic? There's, there's so many data points that I was gathering on these offers. And I spent, you know, so much back and forth over text or phone calls on gathering up just the data that I needed for these offers. I was like, gosh, there's, you know, I've automated, systematized everything else. This is like one of the last pillars that I haven't fully figured out yet. And uh, so I started, you know, doing some research online to see if there's any, anything that was automated or any system that could help me out with this. And there really wasn't. Um, so that's when I was like, man, you know, I guess I'm just going to have to create it. Um, so that's really what offer form was, was born out of a need out of necessity in my own business. So offer form now and how it works in my business now is I'll text over a link or email over a link to offer form. Um, and my clients can simply fill out this information that I'm asking them their purchase price, their earnest money, the spellings of their first and last name, how they want it to appear on the contract. So there's no, oh, you forgot to, you know, spell the, you know, my middle name this way or my first name this way. I want it to appear on the contract this way. So there's, there's none of that back and forth stuff. And then, you know, asking them. And so they fully explain, you know, what earnest money is. And I have like these pre-made videos to where I'm explaining these terms and concepts as they're filling out this information. So like in my market, you know, earnest money, I'm telling them is typically around 2% of the purchase price. And it's common that, uh, you know, you have that deposited within, you know, one to two business days, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I've just like got all this educational videos and content that I've created along with extracting this data. So I just send that offer form link over to my buyers and they get me all the information that I need to write that offer. And if it's going to be a competitive situation, I'll include some questions in there, like such as, do you want to do a seller rent back? Do you want to waive your inspection? Do you want to do an appraisal gap clause? So I can tailor each offer form, like if it's going to be, you know, different scenarios to um, fit the, the needs of that client which has been really awesome in my business and something really cool that happened just two weeks ago. And this was kind of an unintended, I didn't think something like this would happen, but now it's opened up more doors for what offer form can do. So I've got the offer form link like on my website and people can go to the website and fill out the offer form. Um, typically I just have my clients go there, but I had this listing and this random buyer I, all of a sudden I saw that this offer form had been completed and I didn't even know who this buyer was. I had no idea. It was on one of my new listings and I just go in there and, and I look and it's like full price. They're waiving their inspection, all this stuff from, from the offer form that was on my website. And then I, I called the buyer up and I was like, Hey, like, I just saw that you filled out this offer form. Can you kind of tell me about, you know, more about what you got going on? He's like, yeah, you know, I, I saw your new listing and I, you know, know it's really competitive out there. So I just went to your website that was on your, your real estate sign and saw offer form on there, make offer and filled out the offer form and ended up double ending this deal. So making like $40,000 commission off of double ending this deal, just by having my offer from link on there. And he could just quickly fill out all the offer information that he wanted and representing both sides. And it was just such a cool, powerful tool of what, kind of these systems and processes and offer form has allowed me to do. Wow. That's pretty incredible. So the, the platform in and of itself is, is really kind of uh, almost like a quasi assistant. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's kind of what it's, it's, it's creating, right. It's, it's saving you from clerical work. Um, I, I guess the one downside that maybe you could, you could argue is that you're taking away some human interaction that you'd be having with these people, but you know, again, as you're scaling your business and you mentioned that you were doing 27 deals for one person, I can see how that would be, you need to systematize that stuff. Otherwise you're just, you're giving up a lot of time to, to, to accomplish it. So, you know, you mentioned it, you know, it's replacing the need to ask for some of those details, ask those same questions, they can fill in the details, but it, it does more than that. I mean, I, I know you guys have shown me this platform. We've talked about this in the past, but it doesn't it do more than that. And you can have a lender connection in there. And there's, there's, there's different elements to the platform that make an agent's life just simply easier, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, we, we designed it in a way that it is so diverse and customizable that it will work in any market. Like, for instance, like in Arizona, you know, if uh, 
there's a, a property where there's a solar panel lease on there and you need to ask a question, you know, do you want to take over the lease on the solar panel or do you want to have the solar panels inspected? You can quickly and easily just create specific questions such as that for your market. And another agent um, that's on the platform, there's a, a question on their contracts if they want to, you know, have the water softener system inspected that's very specific to like Illinois. Um, so they can just quickly just jump in there and, and add that kind of specific question. Um, and what's also cool is like you mentioned, like these referral partners or people that you work with often, you could drop those into um, your offer form um, link. So you can, you know, ask them if they're not pre-approved, if they want to get pre-approved, maybe with one of your preferred lenders, or if they need a connection to help, uh, you know, transfer over utilities um, through like utility concierge or, or something like that, you can add in um, unique and individual partners. Um, and then another form version of the form that we have is like a new lead form. And this one's really cool. Um, and I've got it set up. So like when I get these like Google leads or these like pay-per-click leads and stuff that, you know, I'm working with and I want to learn more about their criteria or really just any buyer that I have coming in that I just really want to get their entire search criteria down, I'll send over this new lead form and it's got videos that it's explaining, you know, which, which neighborhoods do you want to live in? You know, here's what the Aubrey Butte neighborhood looks like. And I've got like a video where I'm like talking about that, you know, or do you want to live in the Northwest crossing area? And then I've got like a video explaining that neighborhood um, questions asking, you know, if they want to be close to work, you know, how many beds, bath do you need, square footage? I'm just really owning in on that buyer search criteria um, to really help me out with that buyer's um, consultation appointment. I love it, man. And, you know, I want to revert back to what you said about uh, creating evergreen videos. You've mentioned creating videos multiple times, which I think is important for a couple of reasons. One, create video. Uh, you're making a more personal human connection with your customers. Um, but two, you know, you mentioned creating evergreen videos. So explain uh, for everybody that doesn't know what that term means, explain what that is and how you're using it, which is really creating scale for your business, right? Yeah, yep, exactly. So an evergreen video is a video that can be recorded like one time and repurposed um, throughout, you know, for, for really uh, indefinitely. So like these videos that I create, like for leads that come in through like Zillow, you know, how I just will create a video saying, hey, you know, I just got your inquiry on Zillow.com, would love to connect with you about that property um, to where I'm, you know, making it seem personalized, but like I'm able to still reuse that video multiple times. Um, so it's content that I can just keep reusing over and over again that allows me to scale um, without having to recreate that video every single time. Yeah. And, and a lot of those videos you can use within these platforms that we're talking about, right? You can, you can, you can embed videos into offer form, right? You can, yep. you can walk the customers through things. You can embed videos into whatever CRM you're using. Um, I don't think I asked you this. You, you mentioned Lion Desk in the beginning. What are you using now as your CRM? Yeah, so the system that I use now is Chime. Um, I've tried all the systems out there and I just found that Chime gave me the ease of use and the flexibility and power that I needed from, you know, like the power agent, you know, point of view, technical, you know, putting all these systems and stuff together just allowed me to do all that with uh, pretty relatively easy. So this. Chime is what you've shifted to now. What what other is there any other systems that you would recommend or that you're using within your business that um, somebody else might be looking at saying, listen, I need to do some of the systematizing. And 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 let me ask you this too: as you're setting all of this up, I mean that's it's it's fairly time consuming, right? I mean this is I'm not going to sugarcoat this and say that you get CRM press play and it just starts doing all of these things that Cody talks about. I mean, you put a lot of time and effort into setting a lot of this up, correct? Yeah, correct. Um, another big part of like how I help keep all of like everything that's kind of in my head organized um, and like flow workflows and checklists and all of that is Trello. Um, Trello is like a project management tool where you can just kind of see all of your tasks and things that are associated with things. So I have a Trello board specifically for new listings of all the things that need to happen when I get a new listing. And then I have my virtual assistant help me out with 
creating all the, the stuff that you know is involved with a new listing. Same thing with uh, a pending transaction. When a transaction goes pending, I have an entire you know like 50 point checklist of everything to do from you know emailing the lender once a week to check in to opening escrow, confirming earnest money, you know sending timeline emails to clients. Um, all of those things is very systematized um, within Trello, which helps me keep track of all the moving pieces. That's awesome. Uh, what if somebody's listening to all of this and saying, man, how do I tap into your, can you share your follow-up system? Can you share your Trello board with me? Can you share those stuff with me? What if somebody wanted to reach out to you? Would you be willing to share any of this uh, with anyone? Yeah. Yeah. For whoever wants to reach out and just kind of learn more about how I've automated and systematized my business and how you can even tie offer form into these systems and processes, you know, please feel free to you know, reach out to me at Cody at offerform.com um, or, you know, call me, um, whatever, you know, I'm pretty available on, you know, most platforms are, are reachable. So um, just reach out and on social media. To help people. Yeah. On social media, I'm Cody Tuma um, on Instagram. Um, that's probably one of the best ways to reach out to me um, through social media. Awesome. Last, last question, unless something else comes up, you know, you've, you've also, you've also shifted and, and um, diversified and you're doing more than just real estate. Now uh, I, I believe you're, you're building homes, right. Um, and you've also, I think you purchased a investment pro or a uh, commercial property. Is that correct? Yep, this is correct. So um, a year ago or really a year and a half, two years ago, I got into um, like small development stuff. So I started doing some spec homes. I've done about, 12 spec homes to date where I'm just like the developer on the projects and uh, took a lot of the, the funds that I created or the funds that I had made from doing that new construction, new development stuff. And ultimately my goal um, with that was to get into commercial real estate, specifically triple net um, real estate. So I was able to um, use a lot of the money that I had made from that to um, acquire some triple net uh, commercial uh, industrial property. That's awesome. That's awesome. The moral of the story is you're taking your money and reinvesting. Do you have a certain equation that you're using when you do that? Uh, is it a certain percentage that you're setting aside or, you know, what's, what's your strategy there? Yeah. Um, for that, you know, it's mostly just me looking at, uh, you know, the, I've got like spreadsheets and stuff that I've created for like all of the, the new construction projects and stuff that I got going on. So I do like equate like a percentage of that um, into that's uh, new um, and into like the triple net investing stuff. But also like another big part of that was, you know, I, I had a really successful year last year and I knew I was going to have a massive tax liability. Um, so for me, it was like, you know, it's easier to, to, you know, save money on taxes than to go out and try and make that, you know, money um, if I've already made it. So I was able to, with the um, commercial property that I bought, you know, I was actually able to mitigate a uh, majority of my, my tax liability um, for 2021. So that was a, another huge benefit. And, and that was, so any, any tips that you would give to, to anybody listening that, uh, that they might want to uh, incorporate into their business? Yeah. For those that, uh, you know, are high income earners, um, that uh, are going to have some pretty hefty tax liabilities. Um, I would encourage them to look into purchasing, you know, some of these larger assets to where they can, take a cost segregation study on those properties and then do bonus depreciation to um, deduct um, a lot of those, a uh, lot of that um, tax liability. So that way they have to pay little or no taxes um, for, for the coming year. But there's the, the IRS is actually starting to phase that out, the special bonus depreciation for like these types of real estate stuff. So I think there's really only like another year um, left um, to do that. So for those that are really wanting to take advantage of that, um, time is running out. To Will do you that. be grandfathered in? So with your like losses on that, like so, with, like if you do this like special bonus appreciation, you like have losses that carry over like on paper. Um, you're able to carry that over for 20 years. Um, you know, obviously, you know, talk to a CPA or whatever. But this is just kind of what I've you know been told with talking with my. CPA, but you can carry that over, I believe, for 20 years. Um, and uh, but as far as you know, if you want to do it in like year three or four, like this special bonus depreciation, it starts to phase out to where you can only do like 50% or 25% of what you normally could like this year. So a lot of advanced tax things, and you'd want to speak to a CPA who is familiar with terms such as cost segregation and bonus depreciation and, and whatnot.
You uh, are a smart dude. And um, I think that uh, probably plays pretty heavily into uh, your success as well. Uh, if, if I was looking at you on the personality chart, uh, obviously you're definitely going to fall into one of those analytical categories uh, as to one of your personality traits. Um, and I think that goes a long way. And I, and, I, and I think anybody listening today, I think this is a great example. I mean, this is um, uh, this is a conversation, a story about a person who's, you know, doesn't come from, he wasn't handed anything. He just jumped into the business. He just stumbled kind of into it. And then you just figured it out. And um, I think there's too many, there's too many of our peers in our industry that just try to just consistently, perpetually, I'll just figure it out. Uh, on to the next deal. Whereas is it coming from? I don't know. I have no system in place. I have no follow up in place. I'll just buy these leads and I'll call them. And if I don't convert right away, eh, right? They, they just go. They're just lost into a, a wasteland. And um, Cody, I think what you're doing is is very very impressive. Uh, say it again. Uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? You said your email was it Cody at Offerform. Yeah, Cody at Offerform.com is the best way to probably get a hold of me or connect with me on Instagram, and that's at Cody Tuma. It's awesome. Cody, I appreciate you for being a guest today. Uh, last thing I will mention as well, if they want to go learn more about just Offerform in and of itself, where do they go to do that? Yeah, just go to Offerform.com. You can go on there, create a free account and start using Offerform at any time. Awesome. Uh, listen, folks, take Cody up on this stuff. You know, people like this, uh, you know, one of my secret, quote unquote, secret sauces is just putting myself in rooms with really smart people. And by putting myself in a room, I mean, I just would reach out and ask questions. And if I listen to this podcast and hear a Cody Tuma and he said, hey, reach out to me, I'd reach out to him. And, um, you know, I know that there's going to be few and far between, if any, that will actually do that. But you should. And uh, take it, take this advice from me and Cody might uh, curse me off, off, offline here, but um, you know, that's, that's a secret to success, you know, reach out to these people that are willing to share because most, almost all successful people are. Uh, so Cody, thank you so much for being on today, man. Uh, look forward to staying in touch and continue to watch you do some pretty big ass things. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Really appreciate you having me on here. Agents Podcast.